Hello, I'm Dr. Kazi Ashraf. I'm an oncologist and an author. Today I'm going to talk to you about something very simple. Something so simple that oftentimes we fail to pay attention to it. Something as simple as a yawning. And we will also talk about how you can use this simple yet weird act to transform your behavior, your career, your life and also slow down your aging. But before we discuss how that transformation happens, let's ask ourselves a few simple questions. Why do people lie to themselves and to others? And what happens to mind and body when a person tells a lie? And more importantly, how telling lies affects the overall health and accelerates the aging of human body? The answers to these questions will help us understand how our brain and body process information and how we can modify that information processing to put ourselves into a resourceful state. Let's begin with some basics. Our behavior is the foundation of our character. Andy Stanley in his book Next Generation Leader says this, Character is the will to do what's right, even when it is hard. This is by far the simplest definition of character. Character gives the strength to make tough decisions, and it's mostly the tough decisions which make life worth living. Character is self-discipline or integrity. Integrity is built on truthfulness or honesty, and honesty builds on trust or responsibility. In other words, character is the sum total of integrity, honesty, and responsibility, or self-discipline, truthfulness, and trust. Let me quickly talk you through all the three principles one by one. Self-discipline. The level of self-discipline has a major impact on what you accomplish and achieve in your life, and that in turn defines your success. And since self-discipline is actually the driving force behind your confidence and self-esteem, it thus provides you with a yardstick to judge your success. Truthfulness. The point I want to make here is that most people live a lie 99% of time. When people are honest with themselves, then it's quite easy to look at the mirror and see that ocean of lies in which they swim every single minute of the day. Now think about this. How many times we decide to do something with ourselves and then don't do? We simply forget, then rationalize and put out all the excuses that we can think of. We blame our schedule, spouse, kids, parents or anything for that matter. How many promises to ourselves do we break even before we have made them? If that's not lying to ourselves, then what's it? When you lie to yourself like this, over and over, day after day, year after year, you develop a strange habit of not doing what you say you are going to do. This habit of lying to yourself becomes so ingrained and so much part of you that you don't even see that you are lying. People lie to themselves so often, they no longer hear themselves lying. Mike Hernecki, in one of his powerful books, says this, In order to succeed at anything, keep your word. Unsuccessful people, he says, share a trait in common. They are liars. They lie to themselves and they lie to others. All their great plans and schedules are a big lie. Just a way of making it look as if they are doing something to reach their goal. When they say they want advice on what, how to get things done, they are lying. Because they don't want an advice, rather they really want to hear why that something can't be done. So that they can have an excuse ratified by an expert for not doing that particular thing. That's okay, but the problem with lying is that the consequences of a lie are almost always greater than those of the truth. Truth is the foundation of honesty, integrity, and responsibility, and consequently of a good character. People with good character in turn can be trusted to tell the truth. Trust. Truthfulness, self-discipline, and thus character in turn depend on trust and trust building. A person who is trustworthy for other people has in first place to be trustworthy to himself and for himself. Then trust actually takes care of all aspects of behavior. Trust actually leads to empowerment because from trust flow integrity, honesty, responsibility, truthfulness and self-discipline. In one word, everything that we call character. 
Now, let us see what neuroscience has to say about trust and truthfulness. Science tells us that trust and truthfulness are actually a brain function, just like sight, smell, hearing, touch, memory, etc. Which means that there are certain areas of brain which are closely involved with trustworthy behavior formation and its execution. The frontal brain is a major de determinant of behavioral aspects of human being. This area of brain is responsible for breeding trust, truthfulness, self-discipline or honesty, integrity and other aspects of character. It helps us to supervise our words and actions or in other words to walk the talk. The frontal brain is responsible for our healthy, consistent and thoughtful behavior. This area of brain supervises the deep insight about truthfulness and control of impulsive behaviors that erode trust with one's own self and in relationships. The second important part of our brain that's responsible for emotional aspect of our actions and reactions is the limbic brain. The limbic brain has in turn two parts. The first part is responsible for flexibility of ideas, thoughts, actions and behavior so that a person can go with the flow. The second part of limbic brain is involved in a relaxed, calm and trusting outlook. Normal function of this brain helps the person to look for positiveness and expect the best. People who are over anxious, chronic warriors and fearful usually have overactive limbic brain, especially its second part. They focus more on negative and always look for what can go wrong in a situation. They see everything from a perspective of fear, although they may not know about that. They project constant fear and low self-esteem and low self-confidence. They don't trust themselves that they can't trust others and obviously others also don't trust them. The third important area of brain which is involved in trust building and truthfulness is the temporal brain. It creates a data bank of memory for ready reference in future. When we are able to navigate emotionally hard times successfully, the experience is stored and readily accessed later on when need arises. This helps us build trust in ourselves. In the same way, a negative emotional experience evades a person's ability to trust in self. Now, the question arises, how does our brain do what it does? How do truthfulness, self-discipline and trust building affect our brain and then our body and our lives? What changes do happen at the molecular level in our brain and mind that affect our behavior, character and success? It turns out that all this depends on the concentration of some chemicals in our brains. Two chemical substances involved in trust and truthfulness and also self-discipline are serotonin and oxytocin. Serotonin is the main chemical substance involved here. People with low levels of serotonin initially have a high sense of honest behavior. They usually tend not to lie but that's only initially because with time such people have a tendency to become stuck on negative thoughts, old hurts, resentments, etc, etc. They may hold grudges for a long time become rigid with their usually wrong beliefs and thus erode the trust they have once created within themselves and towards others. They tend to appear selfish because they are easily upset when things don't work their way. People who are thoughtful, truthful, disciplined and trustworthy have more than adequate amounts of serotonin in their brains. Another chemical which is important is called oxytocin. Michael Cosfield and colleagues documented in the study performed in Switzerland that oxytocin is found to foster the trust needed for friendship, love, relationship in family, honest business and candid political activities. Now let's go back to the question that we asked in the beginning. Why do people lie to themselves and to others? They do so because they have low self-esteem low self-discipline and low self-trust. Why do people suffer from low self-esteem? Because they have lesser amounts of serotonin, oxytocin and dopamine in their limbic brains. And thus they are prone to produce higher quantities of cortisol 
and other catabolic chemicals in their body to compensate for lower levels of good chemicals like serotonin, oxytocin, and dopamine. When they tell a lie, serotonin level drops. It compels them to tell another lie, and serotonin level drops even more, and cortisol begins to increase a little bit, and so on. This leads to a vicious cycle. The chemical balance in the body shifts, and such people become anxious, worrying, negative, fearful, and stuck. They are driven towards a catabolic state of homeostasis. This chronic catabolic state consumes more and more energy and brings, burns down tissues of its own body. It destroys the connective tissue or that cementing substance that holds the different tissues of body firmly. The covering layers of body cells and tissues are loosened and more and more toxins are released that damage the body further. When this process continues over a prolonged period, the person ages faster, looks older than his age, and becomes incapable of thinking and acting with clarity of thought and thus drives himself to failure. Truthfulness rejuvenates the body, aging is delayed, a negative attitude is eliminated. Thus, it paves the way for success. It turns out that our behavior our decision-making capacity and dealing with stress and aging are more or less the result of a ping-pong of these chemicals within our brains. If that is the case, then the question arises. Is it possible to increase or decrease the concentration of these chemicals in our brain to modify this game of chemicals to our advantage? The answer is yes. Then that leads us to the most significant question. How can we practically influence the concentration of these brain chemicals? And science tells us that that's pretty simple. Yawn. Yes, you heard that right. Yawn. Is it that simple? Yes, it is. Most powerful ideas, theories, inventions, things and technologies have always been simple in nature. In our search for complex and sophisticated things, we tend to overlook simple things. Life is actually based on very simple formula. We don't see that formula precisely because we are looking for some complex formulas. Brain research tells us that yawning is one of the best kept secrets in neuroscience. This seemingly awkward act evokes a strong activity in areas of brain involved with generating social awareness and feelings of empathy. Research tells us that yawning directly and indirectly influences mirror neuron network of our brain precisely to enhance social awareness, empathy and trust building with ourselves and with others. Evidence tells us that when we yawn five to six times in a row, it does not only relax our body, but it also creates a heightened state of self-awareness. It helps us stay focused on important ideas and concepts of any message. Cutting-edge research shows that yawning at least six times in a row is not only better than any meditation technique or yoga or mindfulness exercises, but is better than all of them put together in bringing the yawner into a state of heightened awareness faster, better and in a smarter way and the effect stays for a longer duration than that of meditation. Yawning achieves this result by regulating the temperature and metabolism of frontal brain. It regulates the concentration not only of oxytocin and serotonin but also of numerous other neurochemicals like nitric oxide, GAP, dopamine and others that regulate our behavior, character, success and well-being. Dopamine is particularly increased by yawning, which in turn increases the secretion of oxytocin and serotonin in the limbic brain. Actually, there is no other activity that matches yawning in positively influencing so many functions of brain and this body. It puts your body into a positive state by slowing down the catabolic state and thus it slows down the aging of your body. You become younger, smarter and more agile. Whenever you face a difficult situation like an exam, a job interview or any problem that intimidates you, yawn five to six times. This will immediately put your brain and body into a calm and relaxed state. You will surprise yourself by recalling all that information that you think you might have forgotten.
And that's especially the case whenever you face a stressful situation like job interview or an exam. In order to draw best out of your life, you need to take care of your frontal brain, your limbic brain and your temporal brain. The best and the easiest way to do that is to yawn as frequently as you can. It will increase dopamine in your brain and that will increase serotonin and oxytocin. And that in turn will help you to slow down the aging of your body and also make you stop lying to yourself. And that will give you confidence and self-esteem so that you can put yourself on the ladder to success. That was it for today. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video.